No one is disputing whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I am! What? Do you have some kind of rule about Christmas movies not having explosions? I don't watch any Christmas movie without explosions. All I'm saying is the fact that it takes place on Christmas doesn't make it about Christmas. But if a movie happens on New Year's, it's a New Year's movie. Yeah, and if it happens on Thanksgiving, it's a Thanksgiving movie. And if it happens on Friday the 13th, you don't want to be a kid. What movie takes place? Welcome back, guys, gals, and non-binary pals to another episode of Dick Rogers Space Detective. It is indeed possible we made a mistake by trying to record an episode and have a nerds party at the same time. Anytime we try to multitask things, they seem to go awry. Why don't you try to get the uh, listeners caught up, just in case they missed last week, and I'll try to get these jokers on board. So, I'm sure most of you are aware that we are smack dab in the middle of our three-part holiday special, Dick Rogers and the Missing Christmas Spirit. Hey, folks, we've got to get to the next intro. Tonight, Dick will be visited by the spirit of Christmas present, which strangely turns out to be Zanzas. I guess maybe I should say Xmas present. <laughs> Please, can we try to get on top of it? Uh, and Gizmo really, I, literally I guess that's Christmas present. about that. Even kind of yeah, I'm not going to be able to snap Potter, them out of it without things like getting ugly. Okay, okay, okay. Uglier? I mean, I don't it's think it'll come to blows, but... We might as well throw to the episode. I'm on June. it. Ah, uh, merry tidings and happy season's greetings, dear listeners. I'm so glad you've tuned in to continue to learn more about the haunted holiday happenings of one crotchety space detective on the eve of Christmas in Dick Rogers and the Missing Christmas Spirit. Dick Rogers, unsettled and jumpy from Trouble's tour through his own memories, poured a generous double space vodka on the rocks and downed it in one gulp. He then proceeded to take the entire bottle to his favorite overstuffed chair. Glad that's over. I don't need any spirits taking walks through my memories. I've got more important things to do. Like downing this here bottle, finishing these damn reports, and getting some shut-eye. Suddenly, a deep ringing bell shook Dick's apartment, rattling a few screws loose in the process. What in the what now? Can't a guy get blasted in peace? I'm just trying to make it- Uh, Just stop, Dick. Nobody wants to hear you complain. We all know the drill, just trying to make a buck. Can a guy have a drink in peace? And the answer, as we already know, is no. Of course not. Zanzas? What the... Not another spirit. Can't we just say I've learned my lesson and forget about all this woo-woo scary ghost stuff? Dick, dick, dick. The night has just begun, baby. Things are just starting to get good. Now hand over that bottle. I'm gonna need a drink to get through this walk through your pathetic existence. (laughs) Oh, good God. God, man, this tastes like engine fuel. You really are a cheap bastard, aren't you? All right, let's get going. I need my shoes. I, I can't go with them. My shoes. <laughs> Dick, you're dreaming. Just, I don't know, imagine you have shoes on so we can get on with this story. I hate holiday cheer and babysitting drunks. The only reason I even agreed to this is because I get to make fun of you and your sad life. So let's get on with it. This holiday season, turn up the cheer with the new album from the Humbugs of Insectus 12, Christmas from the Thorax, featuring all your favorite songs of the season. The Humbugs are proof that you don't need a circulatory system to melt hearts. You'll never say bah to these Humbugs. Their carapaces may look hard, but inside they're full of holiday cheer. (laughs) And who could forget the true meaning of the season? Yes, Christmas from the Thorax features all the classic holiday songs, but these humbugs aren't afraid to create new traditions of their own. Ask for Christmas from the Thorax at your favorite record store today, or leave your Thanksgiving leftovers out on your doorstep, and the humbugs of Insectus 12 will bring you the holiday cheer right to your front door. 
Dick found himself lost in a swirling mist. He was starting to regret having that second drink. The scene started to resolve itself, but Dick had had enough. It was time for him to shut out the world and sleep off his woes. Dick, Dick, do not fall asleep. Ah, all right, all right, I'm awake. Where the hell are we? This place looks quite festive. And it's disgusting. Just shut up and watch. What they saw was a tidy suburban home with tasteful Christmas lights and decorations, but also with a GIF officer standing at the door. Why, thank you, officer, for coming so quickly. And on Christmas Eve, I was so scared when I heard the thieves downstairs. I simply reacted as best I could, but I feel much better now that you're here. Well, little lady, by the looks of it, you did a pretty good job getting these bad guys restrained all by yourself. I'm glad I earned my not tying merit badge in the Space Girl Scouts. <laughs> Let's say we work together to teach these crooks a lesson, and you teach me how you tied those knots. Yeah, this is not my present! Uh, no, but I think it's mine. Merry Christmas to me. Can I get a copy of this? Perfect. Now where were we? Oh yeah, your life is way more pathetic and sad. Let's get to it. The mist swirled again before revealing the dark and cold exterior of a rundown house. Dick could clearly tell they were seeing a scene taking place right here on Pluto this time. All right, Dick, do you recognize this house? Uh, no. Uh, is it... One of my former girlfriends? This here house belongs to none other than your employee, Leandra Cratchit, and her companion, Bippo. It's Christmas Eve, and Bippo is home alone because of you, dick. What? I, I don't... Don't tell me you don't remember yelling at Leandra to stop bringing that godforsaken creature into the office if you can't keep it quiet. Well, he did contract that condition that makes him sound British. My teeth are way too nice for that accent. Stop lying to yourself, dick. All right, so this Bippo... Do we know what this thing is? No? Okay, yeah. I, I don't think so. Uh, so your faithful employee had to leave this sad, ailing creature all alone in the night of on Christmas Eve. And don't you just know it? A duo of damp delinquents happens to be sneaking around the area, casing the joint for homes to rob, while unsuspecting folks are at parties or lavish Europa vacations, or in the case of Leandra, forced to come to work and toil over some boring case. Seriously, Dick, I even give my henchmen Christmas Eve off. Crime doesn't take holidays, so we... I mean, my gang literally gets a pay day off. We all know it's only time sensitive because you're out of booze money and you need to get paid. Hey! I get paid double to solve the case by Christmas. Dick, the husband isn't cheating. He just likes to dress up in big furry animal outfits and give out hugs. Um, did, did you just solve it? Are you on my payroll? I didn't have to. He and I run in some of the same circles. But back to you. This is your story, Dick. So Bippo woke up from a nap on Christmas Eve only to find himself alone and afraid. Bippo? Aw, oh, poor kid. Look, Dick, he's trying to make himself a meal. Ugh, that rehydrogenated pizza looks way too wet. Bippo! Wait, do you see that, Dick? Those two shadowy figures at the front door. Look, Mick, I told you. There's no one here. Yeah, but I don't know. Are you sure we'll find anything worth stealing? Looks like whoever lives here doesn't get paid much by their employer. Oh, come on. I pay all the overhead and insurance. Dick, the insurance you offer has a 100,000 credit deductible. They ought to at least have some comms and maybe even an old model unit android. Let's go get our gear and then very slowly make our way back here. So slowly that someone could make very elaborate traps to catch us. But they can't because there's no one home. Bippo! Bippo! Oh, look! Bippo pulled the book Booby Traps and Improvised Anti-Personnel Devices off the bookshelf. He's a... a thing after my own lack of heart, and he works fast. Bippo flew into a frenzy as ropes, paint cans, model train sets, cardboard cutouts of famous sports figures, blow torches, and innumerable other objects flew about the modest dwelling, as if moved by a small green tornado. That does look awfully elaborate. 
Lots of trip wires, cans about doorways, sharp objects to step on. Look, the thieves are back. Come on, man. Okay, on the count of three, we enter, move quickly, grab what we can, and get out of there. And make sure you turn up the humidifier. They don't call us the damp delinquents for nothing. It's gonna be so moist in there. One, two, three. Easy as stealing candy from a baby. No alarms or nothing, see? Now let's get- Boss, wait! Ah! Good gravy. That Bo did a poor job of protecting his home. The tripwire caused the bucket of water to fall right on the foolish creature instead of the criminals. Dick, you forget so easily. You know what they say. Never get a bippo wet after midnight. It wasn't an easy sight to see. The normally tiny, adorable Bippo transforming from his customary blob-like form into a nearly human-sized monstrosity. All scales, teeth, and thin, powerful limbs. Bippo! And what transpired after that is best not elaborated on verbally. Well, look at that. Bippo managed to defeat those thieves... All right, let's wrap this up. I've got a date tonight, and I think we're going to stay in and uh, watch a movie. So, things are fine? Wait, isn't this the part where I feel bad about how I treat Leandra and Beppo, and you encourage me to be a better, more generous person? How am I supposed to feel bad when Beppo managed to save the day all alone and looks perfectly content snacking on... Oh, is Beppo eating the pizza or the thieves? I, uh... Well, you know it takes Leandra hours to calm Bippo down after a water episode, so she'll have to spend all Christmas returning Bippo to the cute, lovable version that we all prefer and do all the, the dumb paperwork you insisted on completing, even though no one ever reads the damn reports. Oh! Or how about how you feel bad that you sideline Bippo instead of using those amazing skills to help solve cases or something. I don't know, look, I'm usually the one not learning lessons, so I'm not great at this wrapping everything up with a nice bow thing. Just just feel bad about your crummy existence, okay? I really didn't need anyone's help with that, but... And with that, dear listeners, the spirit of Christmas present alighted and left a fully inebriated and weary dick slumped in his living room chair. Join me again next week as we delve into Dick's future to see how much more depressing his life can possibly get in the future. After one last word from our sponsors. Ho, 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 it's Skeevy Mike, and I'm coming at you with some holiday steals and deals. Have you been so busy with the kids that gift shopping got away from you? Are your in-laws driving you up the wall? Does your husband come home later and later these days smelling like cigarettes and cheap whiskey? Would you put literally any wrapped present under your tree at this point to preserve some semblance of normalcy for the kids before your marriage collapses next month? Then have I got a deal for you! Swing by Skeevy Mike's pop-up shop next to the dumpster behind the mall. We've got pre-wrapped gifts. We've got stockings with select names on them. We've got... Wow, I could probably grab this 50-inch TV here. Hello? Is someone there? Oh, Bob Cratchit. Santa? Daddy, it's Santa! Sweetie, stand back. That is not Santa. I'm calling the cops. Well, that's all the time we've got now, folks. Look for the guy in the red suit by the dumpster behind the mall. See you soon. Yeah, there's a man dressed as Santa in my house. No, he's not the real Santa. Can you send someone? This guy is stealing my TV. Ho, ho, ho! You've gone too far this time, Eleanor. Just because it's stop motion animation doesn't make it a Christmas movie. I've put up with a lot from you this year, but this is the last straw. Now you two. We were just having a silly argument between friends. Don't say anything you're going to regret. Categories are made to help us, but no category is really definitive. Yeah, like trees and fish. Completely meaningless categories, but they help us think about things. Wait, what? I try to take the high road. I try to be reasonable, but even I have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, well, maybe it's time for you to face some hard facts. Come on, you two. Nightmare Before Christmas is a damn Halloween movie. How dare you? Why are you in a... Come here, Eleanor. I'll get back here, you. Um, this is a problem. I'm just going to have to edit in an old outro here. We'll see you next week. I hope. 
We're on Facebook at Dick Rogers Pod, on Instagram at Dick Rogers Space Detective, and Twitter at Roger Space. And you can join the nerds on Patreon at patreon.com slash space underscore detective. And make sure you subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. And maybe leave us a five-star rating if you think about it. But be sure to join us for your next dick appointment. Same space time, same space place. This episode's nerds are Emily Anderson as AZ Walter and Damp Delinquent 1. Erica Wilson as Marshall and Little Lady. Angela Ventress as Eleanor and Janet Rogers. Logan Wright as Daniel Castle and Zanzis. Wendy Woolworth as Joanna and Dick Rogers. Michael Storm as Mike Nutley, Damp Delinquent 2, and Ski V. Mike. And Nicholas Johnson as narrator, Bippo, Man, and Child. Dick Rogers and the Missing Christmas Spirit was written by Logan Wright, Angela Ventress, and Michael Storm. Sound design by Michael Storm. Music by Nicholas Johnson. Audio editing by Nicholas Johnson. Eat the change, you filthy animal.